Houston, do, uh, we're, we're live. Yep. Yeah. Oh, oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, yep. Yeah. Just kidding. I know. We're live. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for sticking around to the end here. And we have more to go after this. So don't go anywhere. Hopefully, I can bring the energy back because, I, I, you know, it's that time of day. You feel a little lull, maybe. You know, grab that tea, grab that coffee, whatever you need. And let's get into talking about Twitch. Now, I'm going to cut right to the chase. I'm Brian Clark. I go by Clarkio, but let's cut right into the intro to Twitch. I want to talk to you all. You're here. You're part of this conference. You're viewing the, you're viewing the conference and you're looking to make maybe a change into development, right? You're trying to start that career. You're looking for a new start. And the reality of that, right? Maybe you're looking to get a job in, in development too, right? And the reality of that is it's going to be, it's going to take some time, kind of like what PJ was talking about. You're going to have some failures. You're going to get through that. Excellent talk by PJ. Shout out to PJ for that. But it's going to take some time. And one thing you can do while you're taking that time learning stuff is documenting your journey. And the reason I bring this up is I want to share a story of a buddy of mine. He goes, his name, he doesn't go by. His name is Danish Gajar. And uh, he's somebody that I met on Instagram. And uh, I'll tie all this in, why I want you to document your journey with all this stuff with, while you're learning development and going through this process. The niche was somebody that was working in a different industry as well. And I know you heard a lot of uh, several stories from folks today, and you're going to hear more tomorrow. But in particular, the niche's story is interesting to me because the niche was working as a designer, so not too far off from the development industry, but enough to where he wanted to make the change to jump over to development. And uh, while he was doing that, he, he started doing things like learning, using resources, tutorials, courses online. But while he was doing that, he was documenting his journey. And what I mean by that is for him, Instagram was like a, a home for him and he enjoyed that social media platform, but it could be something different for others. But for him, it was Instagram. And so what he would do is he would post pictures of his code or his just setup. And then in the post itself, he would describe what he was learning. And he was learning about CSS. He was learning about HTML, some JavaScript. And as he was doing that, it was great for him because he was keeping a reference of whatever, everything he learned so he can go back and look at it in case he needed a reminder. But he was also sharing that with the community. So other developers on the platform, which there are quite a bit on Instagram, by the way, um, he was sharing it with them so that they can find it helpful and get value out of it. But then on top of it, here's the really, like, really interesting thing that it was, surprised me when I first heard it, was he actually got a job because of all that. His current employer now, uh, the, and his current manager right now, had reached out to him via DMs on Instagram saying, hey, you know, I've been seeing this journey you've gone through. I, I, I love the progress you've made, and I love what you've been sharing. Would you be interested in taking an interview with us? And then that's all she wrote kind of thing. And he has the job, and he's been working there ever since. And I really believe that that's one way. I'm not saying everybody has to go through this, but it's a nice way to, there's lots of value in doing that. And that's why I bring up that story. Now, you might be thinking, well, Brian, that's Instagram. You're supposed to be talking about Twitch. What, what are you doing? It's just another platform, right? So Instagram is documenting it one way. Twitch is another way you can document your, your journey as you're learning and doing these, this thing. You're going through this process. And so, uh, in fact, I have a very another, another, very another, uh, another very quick story. There's another buddy of mine who streams on Twitch. And uh, he was already an engineer, but he was getting into developer relations. He wanted to. And uh, the, he was streaming and they checked out his streams and that helped him land the job that he has now too. So to give you a more concrete example of that, but that out of the way, hopefully that inspired you to think maybe, maybe I could try out Twitch. Maybe this might be for me to, to do that, to document what I'm doing as I go through this. So enough, moving on. Twitch, what is it? We talked about this a little bit at the beginning of the conference, but if you missed it, here's a quick reminder. Let's start sharing my screen here. So when you go to twitch.tv, you enter that into the URL on your favorite browser, you get this pre presentation, you get this UI that shows to you this user interface. And the main thing you're gonna want to look for is the search bar at the top. Uh, you type in there where everybody that's streaming programming, they typically stream under the category science and technology. Now I say category because they're typically with Twitch, it's it's known for gaming. And a lot of times folks would think of it as different games, somebody might stream Fortnite or Microsoft Flight Simulator or uh, Minecraft, right? Those would be game categories, but Twitch has opened up to having other categories as part of their platform. One of them being science and technology, there's art, there's all kinds of different content. So even if it, you, maybe you are familiar with that other stuff, maybe you have skills in another area, maybe you're an artist, right, for fun, 
you could stream that stuff and start doing that. But we'll get into the weeds of that in a minute. So science and technology, that is where folks that are programming stream under that category for the most part. So you search for that. It'll bring you to this next view. So in here, this is going to show you all the live streams at the moment in time that you search for the science and technology category that's streaming under this category. Uh, from there, you're going to want to probably look at tags because that's going to let you zoom in on exactly what it is, what type of programming, do you, what type of science and technology stream do you want? Because there are other things going on in here. There's like ducks and chickens and turtles and earthquakes, which is science and technology related. Yes, but may not be what you're looking for. I mean, check it out if you're interested. You know, you might like it. Apparently, you can feed them, uh, according to that first one on the bottom left there. But you want to get into the programming streams, right? So you look at the tags there, and you can click on those or add those to your search, and that will, you know, drill down into the programming streams. From there, once that's done, you get your results, and that's what all those little rectangles are. It's like a little TV boxes, and you can see what people are streaming. Um, you get a little snapshot, like a little screenshot of what happened at that moment in time, potentially. Uh, it's not like a live view, but it's a live moment from that stream. Uh, and then from there, what you would want to focus in on to help figure out which streams to watch from there is the bottom section underneath those little screenshots. The text that's in bold there, that is the title of the stream. So a lot of times you'll find, at least with the programming streams, they'll get a little bit more specific of exactly what they might be doing. Sure, they're doing programming. What type of programming language are they doing? Or what, what programming language are they doing? What, are, what type of project are they working on? Is it a web app? Is it a mobile app? You know, something like that. They'll usually describe that in the title. And then below that, the text that's not in bold, like dash ducks there on the left side, that is the name of the channel. And then below that are those tags that are associated with the, the streamer's stream, this, that current session. So that's a quick overview of the science and technology. So let's say you found a stream that you want to watch, okay? And it's not going to be blurry like this. It's going to be the, you know, this blurred out area. It's, it's a snapshot from one of my streams. It, it, it's going to be this, what's happening on the screen. That's the one side, the big rectangle in the middle there. And then on the right-hand side is the chat. The chat room, which speaking of, I need to get the chat up for the stream. How dare I? Um, the chat room is where you get a chance to engage with the streamer and other people that are in the community that are watching the stream. So you can have conversations, help each other out, learn from each other. You can help out the streamer. The streamer can answer your questions. This is where all that interaction, that community building happens is in the chat room. So shout out to the chat over there on Twitch, Microsoft developer. I see Chris Jones messing around. Folks, thank you for being here. Thank you for tuning in. So that is what Twitch looks like for you that uh, those of you that may not be familiar with it haven't checked it out yet. Moving on. Why does Brian care? I'm Brian, by the way. Uh, why do I care? Um, I was going to share like a story about, well, I guess I'll sh really quickly a story about why I got involved with Twitch streaming. Uh, I joined this team. I didn't really know my place. I didn't, I felt like uh, imposter syndrome, which was talked about. Like I felt everybody around me was these like amazing they, they are amazing people, not what were, they are amazing people. And how do I bring value to this team? I'm, I'm not trying to like do what they're doing, but like, how do I, as Brian, bring value to this team? And I was struggling with that. I was getting kind of depressed about it. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to try out experimenting, connecting with developers on different platforms like Instagram, like Twitch, because a lot of us were focusing on Twitter. It tends to be the place that fo people focus when it comes to development is Twitter being the platform. And there's, that's true. Like there's a lot of developers on there, but I was like, let me try something different. And when I started streaming on Twitch, I just felt this sense of being a part of something. I, I, I just got lifted up and the community was just really warm and like welcoming and just supportive. And that's, that's my big reason why I still stream week in and week out. And so that's my reasoning. And I feel like the reason I talk about this is because I feel that others can get value out of this, whether you're a viewer of a stream or you stream yourself or both, I think you can get that same value. And that's kind of what I'm hoping to instill through this talk today. So let's now talk about, there's that two roles I kind of mentioned there, right? There's a viewer and there's the streamer. Now you can take on one or both of those roles if you'd like. Let's talk about each individual one a little bit more to understand what's the benefits and uh, you know reasons why you might care as a viewer. And through this, I'm gonna draw parallels since Twitch is very much known for gaming and streaming games. I'm gonna draw parallels from the gaming side of things to the programming side when it comes to streaming that, that type of content, that type of content. 
So the first one is exploring and discovering things. Um, what I mean by this, like the value of, of this live streaming platform and being able to explore and discover content is, well, I really go back to the story with gaming. When I was, when I was younger, I never thought, uh, well, when I was younger, I never really liked watching a friend play a video game. Like you'd be at their house and they might be, it's a single player game and I'd just be frustrated. I just like, I want to try, I want to try. Um, and I was like, when Twitch came up and I heard about that, I was like, why the heck would I ever watch somebody else play a video game? And then I realized, well, one of the reasons or the value you can get out of it that I found I could get out of it is maybe uh, I don't want it, you know, when I'm looking into getting a new game, especially at that point in time, everything was 60 bucks. So that was quite the invest. That is quite the inv investment to drop 60 bucks on a game, but you're not fully sure if you're going to like it or not. So with watching somebody play the game, that allows me to explore new games, discover new games that I might like, and it'd be worth investing my hard-earned money in. So that's with gaming. The parallel there with programming is you're thinking about, hey, what programming language should I learn? Which programming language seems interesting, will work well, will resonate with me? Well, you can start watching folks that are streaming Python, that are streaming JavaScript, that are streaming C Sharp. And you can learn whether or not it's something that you want to invest your time in. If you're understanding more easily somebody that's streaming C Sharp versus somebody that's streaming, you know, Cold Fusion or something. I don't know. So that's, to me, one of the benefits as a viewer is you can figure out what you might like, what might be your interest. From there, we're talking about learning and getting better as a value as a viewer. So going back to the gaming situation, let's say you know you like a game. And your skills there have kind of plateaued. You want to get better and you're struggling to do that on your own. What do you do? Well, you can watch somebody, especially in the gaming side of things. There's people that are getting paid. They make careers out of playing video games and they play for hours on end and get better and know the ins and outs of these games and they stream it. So you can watch them and learn about the little tips and tricks and strategies and tactics that they use and apply it to your own and start leveling yourself up, leveling your skills up in that game. The same can be applied to programming as well. So maybe you did decide that you want to go with C Sharp. You're still struggling to gather the concept of like inheritance or something like that within C Sharp. Well, watch some folks that are doing C Sharp that are using inheritance and applying it to their projects. And that will maybe make it click for you. And you can level up your skills in that way. Those are two options there or two possible benefits I see is for viewers and why they would care. The other thing is real life, real time interaction. Now I don't have a gaming, I mean, it applies to gaming as well, but specifically to programming here. When it comes to learning new things in this industry, we tend to lean on courses, tutorials, um, instructor led classroom type things. And those are all great and well. And specifically when it comes to like the tutorials and courses or the videos online, it's kind of like they go from A to B, everything just works and rainbows and butterflies, right? But when you go to try it, you stumble. There's some hurdles. There's some things that maybe you missed that you forgot and you got to go back and watch. And it doesn't always go as planned as it did for the instructor in the video. When it comes to live streaming like this, you can see the behind the scenes, the raw experience of working through projects and working through learning something in real time. And you can see what that, you know, you can get that real experience, the more real life experience. So to me, it's supplemental. It's not saying the tutorials and courses don't bring value. They absolutely do. I just believe it's supplemental. Maybe for some people, it might be the primary and better way for some folks because everybody learns a bit differently. It might be the best way for you to learn. So that's one of the benefits there as a viewer is you can, you can get that real time. And on top of it, you get the opportunity to interact with the person that's learning this or maybe teaching it and sharing their knowledge with you. If something doesn't click for you, you don't quite understand it. You can say, hey, hey, in the chat, you know, I, I appreciate you talking about this, but I didn't quite understand that part. And you kind of go elaborate on that a bit more. And then a lot of times, because of how nice the community really is and, and the streamers here on, on Twitch, um, they, they'll pause, they'll stop what they're doing and they'll try and help you out and show you and explain that a bit further. And last but not least, uh, that the community and social aspect when it comes to live streaming, because it's in the moment, people are coming together, albeit virtually, you know, it still feels like you're there. You feel like you're a part of something. You feel like you're part of the team. And it's just a, it's just a nice human interaction, human feeling thing that I, I personally find to be quite valuable and beneficial as a viewer.
and as a streamer too, honestly, which leads me into the next part as a streamer role. Why would a streamer care? Why do you want to stream? And really quick going through these, you get a chance to reach new audiences, right? Some, some folks may not be on Twitter. Some folks may not be on Instagram or whatever it may be, right? They, they may be tuning into Twitch for their stuff for the type of things that they do more leisurely. Um, you get stronger engagement, I feel, right? In terms of like having that real-time feedback, being able to interact with people in the moment and get feedback on like, hey, is this working? Is this, is this making sense what I'm talking through here? And then for those of you that are interested in doing more presentations, getting, getting prepared for talks, constantly doing this, constantly streaming is building up that resilience to, you know, work out the butterflies. I mean, to be honest, I still get them. Uh, work out those butterflies before doing a talk. And, um, you know, just get you better prepared, get you, get you more practical experience doing that without having to necessarily, especially during the current times, without having to go in person and talk in front of a group of people, you know, physically being there. All right, so how, right? I kind of convinced you, uh, you know, maybe to get started streaming and you're wondering, how do I get started? Well, we have a community-driven document, a guidance that we started creating up on GitHub. So if you go to this link, you go to aka.ms Clarkio stream guide, you'll be able to check it out. It's, it's rough right now, to be honest with you all. And it's been a little while since I've, I've uh, you know, tended to that repository, but the value is still there in terms of what documents have been written up in the guidance that we have there. And it, we can evolve. And if you have input, I invite you all, especially in the chat, those of you that are interested, to contribute if you'd like and add your thoughts and ideas and questions you might have that we can answer as part of that guide. So check that out if you'd like. But we're not done. So let's say you've, you've committed to yourself. You're like, you know what? I'm going to give this a go. I'm going to try this. Thank you, Brian. This was wonderful. What advice would you give me to somebody new getting started with streaming? I got you covered. Don't worry. First of all, I would say, try your best to work towards a consistent schedule. Now, I know everybody's schedules are probably all over the place and you got a lot going on. So that's why I say, try your best to work towards a consistent schedule. And the reason I suggest that is because when you think about like a typical TV show, you know, XYZ show is going to be on Tuesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern or something like that, right? And so the folks that enjoy that show can carve out time in their day to make sure they can be there to watch that. And that's the idea here. If you want to, you know, the more consistent you are, the more likely folks will be able to plan ahead to be there and join you for that stream. In addition to that, I would say, keep it simple. Don't worry about getting all the bells and whistles, getting a fancy microphone, lights and cameras and all that stuff, because one, it's quite the investment. And two, you're not, you don't, you know, you're just getting started. You don't know if you're going to really want to keep up with it or if you like it. And that's okay if you don't like it. You know, it is what it is. Maybe maybe posting, doing blog posts or something like that to keep yourself accountable and document your journey might be the way to go. Twitch is just one way. Live streaming in general is just one way to potentially do that. So keep it simple. And I'm gonna show right after this slide what my first stream ever looked like so you can understand and, and get, a, get an understanding of what I mean by that. Keep it simple. Don't worry about all, getting all the bells and whistles with hardware and devices for stream. And keep it real. Just be yourself, be genuine. Um, don't worry about having to impress anybody or just like, because people will get us, people will feel that even though it's virtually done, they'll feel whether you're just kind of putting on show kind of thing and whether you're being real, you're being true to yourself kind of thing. Um, and that's what's, what's going to cause people to connect with you or not. I think too, is how just genuine you, you are with yourself and with the, your audience that you have. Uh, and then don't over plan. And the idea I mean with that is I've seen folks, um, go the route of, basically treating live streaming like you're doing a conference talk, which is fine. I think it's good, but I, I don't know that that is sustainable. Or I don't believe that that is sus sustainable. And that's why I say, don't worry about over planning it. Um, I, I think having a general goal in mind, maybe some outline you want to try and follow for a stream is, is good and all. Um, but to be honest with you, I, <laughs> maybe this is good. Maybe this is bad. I don't know. There's people seem to like it, but I generally wing it. I just have an idea of what I want to try and do. I want to add a feature to my, project or I just want to talk through something. And if I get through that good, if I don't, as long as I made some progress towards it, that's kind of how I approach each stream, but well, at least some of my streams. Um, so that's, that's the advice I have for you all with that, that want to get started with Twitch, with Twitch. And then here's that example I was telling you about with my first stream. So you could see, I just took like my built-in webcam to the, like the laptop I had. Um, I just plugged that camera into the corner and then I shared my screen. And I use the microphone on my lap, like built-in laptop microphone, and I just click, let's go, right? And then in terms of what to stream, I didn't know at the time. 
I had no idea what, what to stream. I didn't have a project or anything like that thought up. And I was like, you know what? I know about all these code challenge websites that can just help me practice my skills, my programming skills. So let me dive into one of these. This one in particular is called called called. I don't know why I was fumbling on that. It's called codewars.com. For those of you in chat that might've heard of it, let me know, let me know. But there's a bunch of them out there that you can, you can check out. Um, so yeah, so that was like what I decided to do. I was Saturday nights and, and off, off we went. This was back in January, 2018, I want to say. Um, and you can see, like, I wasn't looking at the camera right now. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking into your soul right now. Right. That's what you got to do when you're on camera. No, I'm just kidding. You just look at the camera, engage with the people that are, are the, kind enough to spend time out of their day to join you in the stream and join you for this conference talk too. So thank you everybody in the chat. By the way, Seth and Donna, we, we, <laughs> I love the name Twitchlings. I think I might steal that because typically the way, we, you know, I've always, at least the Twitch culture, the way we address chat is we, we call chat, chat. We say, hey, chat, how you doing, chat? What's going on, chat? That kind of thing. But now I kind of want to be, hey, what's up, Twitchlings? <laughs> but yeah, thank you for that, Donna and Seth. Appreciate it. All right. So what do you need to get started streaming? Well, you kind of need a decent internet connection. In particular, your upload speed has to be fairly decent. I, I typically recommend about five megabits per megabit, megabits per pix, per second per pixel. Why do I want to say pixel? It's late here in the evening on the East Coast where I'm at and I'm stumbling. I'm struggling. So stick with me, folks. All right. I'm sorry. Yeah, five megabits per second upload speed is kind of what, what I would hope you, you know, if you can get that. But I've heard of people being able to stream with less. Uh, a computer. Duh, right, Brian? Uh, a microphone, a camera, optional. If you don't feel comfortable being on camera, that's fine. I've seen people have success without a camera. It, you know, I just feel that a camera is an added benefit. It, it creates a more um, connection with the folks that are viewing your stream. They put it, it's a, it's a face to the voice, you know? And uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of why I, I suggest that. But you don't necessarily need it. And then broadcasting software. The, the de facto one that's free and open source is called Open Broadcaster Software, or OBS for short. That thing can be quite cumbersome. There's lots of other tools out there, like one is StreamYard. Um, there's Restream. There's a bunch of them out there. If you, you know, if you need some help, that streaming guide, that, and I'll have the link again at the end, will help you get squared away with doing that. And then just streaming, figuring out something you enjoy. So if you, you know, you're looking to learn JavaScript and you just want to do some code challenges with that, try that out. That's a good way to get started. Or even like preparing talks or something like that. Whatever you feel you enjoy doing. It doesn't necessarily have to be programming. Give it a shot. Try streaming it. What now? Keep in mind, uh, who's this for? Who, who are you going to be streaming for? Or who's, who should stream? Some people might think, well, you have to be a senior dev and have you know, 10x in your title, 10x developer in your title or something like that. No, it's a bunch of, bunch of junk. Uh, it's, I think I'd really believe anybody, regardless of experience level, should give it a shot. Um, for one of the reasons, let's take it this way. Maybe you're new, you're uh, folks here in this conference, you're new to streaming. Um, one of the ways, uh, I really feel that you bring, like I was saying earlier in the, the conference, you bring a new perspective to learning stuff. When it tends to happen with folks that have several years of experience in the industry, we take for granted the things that we have learned. It's called the, you know, sometimes referred to as the curse of knowledge and forget that that's something that, you know, even though it comes so natural to us now, it's not actually that natural. We struggled with that at one point in time and we need that reminder. And it's helpful to see that, right? Whether you're a senior, more senior experienced, senior experienced developer, or you're just a fellow, you know, newbie to programming, right? Everybody can learn from each other. I really believe that. And uh, so this is not necessarily just senior devs, experienced devs that should be streaming. I think people that are new and wanting to document their journey and, you know, doing that and connecting with the community to help you and support you through that journey. This is a great, a great thing for you as well. Um, know your audience, you know, get to know your audience. Uh, keep that in mind. Keep them engaged into it. Don't just, you know, sometimes we get into a train of thought and you're going to keep streaming and working on that. But then make sure you check back in with the chat. Uh, and then beyond that, listen for feedback. The chat is, the community is fantastic with this. They'll be like, hey, you know, your audio is off. It's not sounding good. Or we couldn't actually see that because your camera was blocking it or whatever, you know, things like that, whether it's production related or programming related. Listen for that feedback. Use that to help iterate on your stream and become better and improve. And that's it, folks. That's, that's all I wrote. 
Uh, there's that link again, aka.ms slash Clerkio stream guide. It's a GitHub repository and it should help you out with getting started. If you have any questions, I'll be hanging out in the chat for a little bit longer. I know I didn't get a chance to really, you know, answer the folks that were in there as the session was going on, but I'll be sure to catch back up. Anybody that tagged me, just do at Clarkio in the chat and I'll be sure to check it out. All right. Thank you all. Have a good rest of the conference. Back on over to Seth and Donna.